we are back thanks for clicking on the link welcome to good energy enjoy the content and everyone have a blessed day and we are back welcome to good energy guys please please like subscribe comment below and we are back we will be covering both wta finals today first we are going to start off in istanbul and then we will head to the porsche grand prix in germany anastasia Potpova ranked 122nd in the world that will change after this final appearance and veronica kunamatova ranked 29th in the world we have a final set that's right here in istanbul but first let's take a look at anastasia Potpova and how she got here working her way from the qualifier in the round of 30 Two, we saw her take out Bartunkova 6164 in straight sets. Then it got really, really shocking. She took out Petra Marchik in straight sets 6263. Then in the quarterfinals, Cerebus Termo 6262. Unbelievable. That would lead her to Yulia Putinseva here in the semifinals. Now I cannot stress enough the swag that Anastasia Potpova is playing with coming into the match with her yellow luxury puff coat. And the reality here is Yulia Pultenseva was the much more experienced player playing, in my opinion, just as good if not better. This match would go three sets. Yulia Putinseva dominating the first set 6-2, but I told you guys this is a match Anastasia would win. She would come back and dominate the second set and eventually take Putinseva out in the third set in easy fashion. The reality here is looking at the numbers. Put, uh, Putinseva struggled in her service game. Not a huge ace player, but she certainly did not get any today. Now, if you say Putinseva is going to have a match where she only commits three double faults, I uh, probably would say there's a good chance she wins that match. But Podpova only committed two double faults. She won just about every service category. The first serve percent is 69.4. Second serve points won 54% to Putin Seva's 45%. And the reality here is taking a look at the return game 50.8% first return points won for Podpova. 38% for Putin Seva. That's not going to get it done against any player on tour. And the total service points won. Podpova won 60% of her service points, and Putin Seva 47%. You saw this match get really wide, and in, in the early second set, Podpova adjusted to Putin Seva's game. She figured her out, and her ability to adjust to her opponent's game it it lets you know that Podpova is she's able to think on the fly she's able to call audibles and this is chess Podpova is a high quality tennis player she's much better than her ranking and she's going to need to do a lot of that versus Kunamatova. and speaking of Kunamatova, let's take a look at how she got here in the final. Veronica Kudmatova, the world's ranked 29th in the world. And the reality here, she started off the round of 32 as cool as the other side of the pillow. Uh, she would take out in straight sets 6 2 6 love, Melankova. That was pretty straightforward. In the round of 16, and Bogdan, uh, that was a walkover, okay? Uh, in the quarterfinals, Anna Bondar, who was playing very, very well two tie breaks the very experienced clay player with a ton of clay matches and victories uh, i felt this would be a pretty tough match for kunamatova however i had her winning in straight sets and certainly she did but it took two tie breaks and i feel that match there battle tested her for what's to come 
Sir Shu. That's right, unbelievable. Serana, when it comes to the clay, is very, very battle tested. And this is a match that I thought would probably go three sets, but I did have Kunamatova winning it. And Kunamatova, very shocked. Uh, she would win this in straight set 6-3, 6-3. Uh, just needing essentially uh, two breaks from Serrano's serve to seal the deal. But the reality here is one age from Kunamatova. If you would tell me she played a match with Serrano Sershu and she only had one age the entire match, would she win? I'd say probably not. But nonetheless, Kunamatova, uh, one of the best servers on tour. Uh, only three double faults and that's good uh, she was able to keep the ball in play to the spots that she needed to get the job done and set up her rally points but the reality here is Kudumatova won the first serve 68.4 percent to Sir Shoes 63 percent the second serve points won 44 percent to Serrano's 33 percent that there was major in determining this victory and getting the break and Kunamatova dominated the return game 35% of first return points won compared to Serrano's 28% and this is a match here where Serrano she she looked a little tight early on and I don't know if it was a lack of rest or just a busy schedule here um, I felt this tournament compared to the Porsche Grand Prix you had a lot more experienced clay players here and these matches were very very tough 280 points up for grab for the finalists 108 I'm sorry 180 points for the runner-up and these points can be very critical especially for someone like Sershu or Potpova uh, etc but I just felt Serrano was a little stiff and Kunamatova nonetheless got it done so we have a final that is set Anastasia Potpova versus Veronica Kunamatova let's take a look at the numbers 280 WTA points up for grabs and this will be very very interesting Veronica Kunamatova, age 24 years old. She is from Russia, 5 foot 8, right-handed, but also very good with her left. And ranked 122nd in the world. That is now as that's dropped to about 93 before this match. Uh, 21 years old, also from Russia, 5 foot 7, right-handed as well. And these two ladies have played earlier this year in Melbourne. And uh, that was a match that went three sets. Veronica Kunamatova won the first set 6-2. She would lose the second set being broken by Potpova 6-4. And the third set we saw prime Veronica Kunamatova winning the third set 6-love. That was very, very embarrassing. Veronica Kunamatova, one of the strongest serving players on tour. Uh, very powerful for her frame. She has a very small upper body, but as you can see, she is very athletic, uh, especially uh, if you take a look at her poses. Very, very uh, flexible, and she's ready to pounce on the ball once it's coming at her. And I did a video on the top 10 um, most feared sports figures that um, have an intimidating stance or pose and um, Serena Williams of course made the list but Veronica Kunamatova her pose is very very intimidating and that's an edge that can give you an edge especially playing a younger woman like Anastasia Potpova uh, Kunamatova is averaging uh, just under five aces per game and the reality here is if Kunamatova can put up five aces or more she should definitely win this match but through the season thus far Veronica Kunamatova she's winning 77% of her service games she's winning 28% of her return games I'd like to take a look at how they do when the pressure is on and Veronica is saving 62% of her break points she is converting 46% of her opportunities with break points from her opponent and Veronica is she's playing like a top 15 top 10 player 
this is by far her best year. She's been working very hard with her husband and the work shows. And what I think she doesn't get a lot of credit for, um, I mean, the tour is very competitive, but she is one of the strongest players on tour. But I also think she is one of the toughest mental players on tour. She does get frustrated, she does get upset, but it's more of a controlled anger. It's not like those loud outbursts like Sabalenka. You see it on her facial expression and she lets her game speak. She lets her game do the talking. Uh, if we take a look at Anastasia Potpova, yes, she did lose the only head-to-head -head these two ladies have had. Uh, but Anastasia Potpova, uh, she's climbing the rankings. She's averaging just under three aces per game. If she wants to win this match for Skun Matova, this is the biggest match of her professional career on tour. And trust me, she wants to win this match. 280 points will jump her in the rankings, and she would have arrived, believe me. Um, she's going to have to get aces. She's going to have to get at least more than her average. She's going to need four aces to win this match. And that's what I think because she's going to need to disrupt Veronica Kuminotova's rhythm as much as possible. And if Stage is winning 56% of her service games and her return game, she's winning 29%. Under pressure, she's saving 48% of her break points. That will not be enough. Uh, to beat Kuna Matova. She is going to have to prevent break points on her serve. Her break points, convert, uh, um, her break points converted from her components. I'm sorry, guys. Her break points converted from her opponents, 35.5%. And if she wants to win this game, that's going to have to be at least 45-50%. This is just one match to win this championship. And the reality here is the average body of work through the season so so far, she, she Anastasia Papo was gonna have to perform above her average. She's not going to get a win with her averages playing someone that's above average, someone that's playing like a top 10 player. Uh, my pre Official prediction for this match is I like Kuna Matova to win this match. The money line is low enough. Uh, I actually took Veronica Kuna Matova on a future. I told you guys to do that as well. Uh, I have Veronica Kuna Matova on a future at plus 250, winning this match from the quarterfinals. And the reality here is that was the price then. Now you can get Veronica Kunamatova to win this match at minus 188. I think that is a fair price. That is a reasonable price. And Seiza Popova is playing well. However, I think Kunamatova's power is just going to be a little bit too much. And she has a small frame, and it's shocking when opponents see how strong she actually is. And I think that disrupts their game completely. Uh, I think the first set's probably going to go much like the first set they played uh, in January, probably around 6 2, 6 3. The second set's going to be the most competitive for Anastasia Podpova. Uh, but however, I do like Kunumatova to get the victory. Anastasia is going to put up a fight. Yeah, absolutely. You never know when you will get back to a finals appearance. But this is a match Veronica Kunumatova will win. She will get her second WTA singles title on tour. And much congratulations to her husband for the work, her trainer. She has arrived. If you've listened thus far, please like, subscribe, comment below. But please hit the like button. You can donate to my PayPal. Sign up for my Patreon if you want official locks. And let's get into the Porsche Grand Prix in Stuttgart, Germany. Guys, this is going to be a great, great finals. We have Iga Swiatek and Jarna Sabalenka. Iga Swiatek's road to the finals here in Germany. Uh, pretty, pretty easy one until she ran into some of the top tier competition. The first round, uh, defeating Liss 6-1-6-1, that was straightforward. And Mirana Kanyu 6-4-6-4 in straight sets. That second set was a lot closer than it actually looked. And Mirana Kanyu getting a break on Iga before Iga breaking back. That was a very, very tough match. Instant classic. And of course, today we saw Iga Swiatek versus Samsonova. 
What a match that was. Amazing. Samsonova came out guns blazing, taking the first set in a tiebreak 7-6. Iga Swiatek looked to be very, very stressed and tired, sliding all over the clay courts. When this match started, Iga Swiatek was an 88% favorite to win it. Uh, Samsonova having only a 12% chance to win, but that flipped after winning the first set. Samsonova having now a 73% chance to win, but she would not. Iga, it looked like somewhere in the mid-second set, she finally made the adjustments, and you started to see a more animated Iga, and that's the difference we're seeing now between the 2022 Iga and the 21-20 19 Iga Swiatek where she was just quiet and timid very shy uh, she did hire her mental coach which I feel is doing a great job she's now more open and more passionate and she it seems as before that was bottled in and that was really affecting her play where she just wasn't letting out her talent I saw Iga's full potential early on um, before winning the Roland Garros and even that match with Osaka the first time they played I saw it then I'm like wow this woman is really good her serve and volley was just so consistent and accurate and remember remember Iga Swiatek's serve is one of the tightest in the book if you want to study great serves you have to study Serena Williams Iga doesn't she doesn't really have that Power to overwhelm you with her serve and rack up a bunch of aces, but her serve is consistent to within six inches every time. You know, no more than a foot they estimate. Her serve is very accurate, it's in the same spot, so she knows where she's going, she knows how you can return it, which sets up her shots and her rallies the way she wants it every time. But nonetheless, we have a blockbuster on our hands. Iga Swiatek, she's going to have to face Sabalenka, and we will get into that preview and prediction very shortly. I just want to take a look at Sabalenka's path here and just talk about what she's going to have to do if she wants to win this tournament and that Porsche that she's been talking about. Um, Sabalenka, first match against Bianca Andreescu. She won the first set 6-1. And I told you guys on my Patreon, take her win the first set. That was a lock and easy one. Dropped the second set 6-3, came back and won the third set 6-2. Bianca just getting back into the swing of things. I felt that was a good test for Sabalenka because she's been off for over a month as well. Conteve, again, this is a match I said take Sabalenka to win the first set. She did. However, Conteve came back in the second set, stole it 6-3. The third set, Sabalenka prevailed, looking like the prime Sabalenka of early 2021. Last year, she was in this tournament. In the final, she did not get the Porsche. Ashley Barty won the singles uh, champion uh, championship, and she also won the doubles championship with Jennifer Brady. Hopefully Jennifer Brady comes back soon. She has a really nice serve volley game as well. The power of Sabalenka just, it demolished in that Conteve. Paula Bedosa in three sets. The third set, essentially, the first and the third set, you essentially saw Sabalenka come out strong, catch her second win, and because she hasn't been active, and then just pick things up to the level she needed to do to advance against Paula Bedosa and Paula Bedosa looked tired and fatigued she's looking she's looking very drained if you can bring her into deep waters like a Rabinkana um, those type of players they start to fold and I hope Paula Bedosa like I said last video hope she really works on her stamina this offseason does a lot of running because uh, for a top 10 player, she shouldn't be getting that tired every match. It's happening every match. But nonetheless, let's get right into it, guys. Preview and prediction video. If you've listened so far, please like. This will... I'm going to help you win some money here, guys. Please like if you can. Join my Patreon. Donate to the PayPal if you can. Guys, if you follow the Patreon, I help you guys get winners. Uh, do we win every game? 
No. I get a loss here and there, but we're winning 80% of the matches. 80% of the picks I put on there win. Eight out of 10 win. That's right, okay? So be sure if I do miss one, then we come back and run off some big ones in a row, and I will tell you when you got a big one. But the reality here is the head-to-head -head is one, one for these two ladies, and will that matter this match? I don't really think so, okay? The winner here is gonna win 470 points, the runner-up is going to win 305 points. That's going to be very important. Sabalenka needs those points. But the previous head-to-head -to -head, uh, took place uh, this year in Doha, where we saw Iga Swiatek win that straight set 6-2-6-3. And before that, the WTA finals, where Sabalenka won in three sets. Swiatek won the first set 6-2. Sabalenka came back winning the second set 6-2 and then 7-5 uh, in the third set. WTA Finals, that really, really mattered. That was very important. And the reality here is Iga, uh, she was the weakest link in that WTA Final. And I know she felt it. I know she felt embarrassed and she probably felt like she didn't belong there. And she's been working very, very hard this offseason. It shows and she's the best player on tour right now. But um, nonetheless, these two ladies, in terms of their career stats, um, 10 titles for Sabalenka, six doubles titles. And I feel that Sabalenka's game matured when she was winning those titles with at least more tens and playing a lot of doubles. Uh, when she climbed the rankings as a singles player, she hasn't really been playing the doubles as much consistently, but I feel her game evolution was a result of those doubles titles. 279 wins, 146 losses on her career. Again, as I've been telling you guys, Sabalenka is not the best clay player, okay? She only has 45, uh, well, factoring the few this year, uh, just under 50 wins on clay, 48, 49. But the reality here is Iga Swiatek, 87 wins on clay, much more experienced clay player. Uh, Iga does have six singles titles with the Sunshine Double in there and the Roland Garros Major. Iga also won the Roland Garros as a um, as a junior. So Iga is a good clay player. She looked really, really good on this court. And these two ladies, the head-to-head -head is 1-1. One, one. Um, but if we really, really take a look at things, uh, Sabalenka is the stronger player. Uh, she has the stronger backstrokes. And I think Iga, after playing such a long, grueling match against Samsonova, having a very short turnaround I mean she literally when you take away interviews and tour obligations and you know preparation and you know cool down from the match she played she she's probably maybe gonna get seven eight hours of sleep I mean I don't know her schedule but I don't think it's gonna be a full night's sleep but Iga did mention in the post-match interview that she's in the best shape of her life and it won't be an issue i do think it will be an issue being a former athlete you don't feel now they have the best resources you know whether it's uh, ice baths hot tubs jacuzzis uh mas masseuse you know personal um massage therapist right in the room there whenever you wanted all of the you know heat technology to cool the, the joints the bones relax the muscles so they do have the technology but the reality is you're not really going to feel that until you wake up if you feel something at all um, you get deep in the first set or second set and then you get a little stiff and sore then you're calling for the physio i personally think that match against samsonova will affect the match you're going to have here i really truly think that I don't really want to focus too much on Iga Swiatek's amazing numbers so far this year, and we know the numbers from Iga are just amazing. 22 match win streak, uh, winning before losing 
this set today against Samsonova. She had 27 sets in a row that she won. Unbelievable. Okay, and in terms of just how she's hitting the ball, I mean, her, her top spin's amazing. And she's approaching Venus Williams' uh, win streak record here. Uh, and I think she has a really good chance to get it. Um, but the reality here is she's winning a lot of these matches because she's putting her opponents in some very uncomfortable positions. And they're, she's playing very fast. That's the key. She's playing very fast. And her opponents aren't able to adjust. They're making mistakes. They can't set up their offense. And like I said, I'm not going to focus too much on Sriantec statistics for the year because I think she's going to be a little tired. And I, I don't think those numbers are going to be to the best of what she can average and what she should average because I think fatigue is going to play a factor. If you watch that match against Samsonova, Igus Riantek was very, very tired. Uh, but I will take a look at Sabalenka's numbers versus Paula Pedosa. Nine aces. If Sabalenka gets nine aces versus Riantek, she's going to win this match. And the reality here is I think she's got a really good chance to hit nine aces because she's going to be rested. She made easy work of Paula Pedosa, take care of her media obligations and tour obligations. Uh, get some um, energy and glucose in your system and get some rest. Seven double faults. Okay, she's going to have to lower that number. That's going to be too many for Iga Swiatek. If she's making any unforced errors, um, any type of errors at all, they're going to have to be in play. She cannot give Iga free points without touching the ball. Okay, uh, Her first serve percentage, she's going to have to get that up 52% is too low. That's going to need to be in the 70s. Simple and plain. Simply put, she's going to have to serve the heck out of that ball without making the unforced errors. And the reality here is break points saved 75%. 6 of 8 against Paul Bedosa. If she does that, she will win the match. In terms of her return game, 28.6% against Paula Bedosa is not going to get it done. Uh, we're going to need at least mid-30s to beat an Iga Swiatek. Because remember, Iga's numbers on the flip side, in terms of a return games won, that's about 60, what what was that? Uh, I want to say it's 6, uh, I'm sorry, 55%. Okay, so that means Sabalenka is going to have to win at least, at least 40% of her return game. So she's going to have to step that up. And the reality here is I think she's got a really good chance to do that. But something's going to have to offset. Something's going to give. Either Sabalenka's going to hold serve and just wear her out and just convert the break point opportunities that she does get and she can force. Or she's just going to be in a match where they're, they're going to play three tie breaks. And the best person that can hang on and has the most stamina will win. And that's not going to be Iga Swiatek. If we take a look at strategy and what I think these two ladies are going to come in here and do. Then you have to like Sabalenka. Sabalenka plays with a very fast pace. She plays best when she's comfortable, smiling, and having fun, and there's no pressure. If you listen to her post-match interviews, she talks about wanting the Porsche. Not only does she talk about winning the Porsche, she blew a kiss at it. She put a uh, hand gesture of a heart for it, and she was here last year, and she lost to Ashley Barty in, in this final. So the reality here is she does play well here, even though she's not a great clay player. But this year, unlike last year, and you have to understand, when you get to a championship and you lose that championship, you remember that. Now, Iga Swiatek said she doesn't, mentally, she doesn't learn well from losing. She does better when she's winning. Having lost this tournament before, trust me, the passion. And I think, personally, I think I disagree with that statement. Maybe that works for her, but I think most people learn from losing. If you're winning all the time, 
a lot of times you can get a little too comfortable and a lot of times you're not really you can be pushed to your limits or your best in some of those victories but a lot of times you learn the game mentally from losing that's just what i think but the reality here is sabalenka if you think she doesn't want this title then you're absolutely wrong now i did say take iga as a future to win this uh, tournament um, in the quarterfinal um, in the semifinal round, she was a minus 250 favorite. Of course, that can be hedged with uh, Sabalenka now being a two to one, two plus, two to one uh, underdog in this match. Now, for the prediction, thank you guys. If you've listened so far, please like, subscribe, comment below. For the prediction for the Porsche Grand Prix champion, Sabalenka plays fast and she's playing very comfortable and she's calm and relaxed and she said in her uh, post-match interview uh, I'm not thinking too much uh, because when you think you make errors and mistakes I'm playing my game I'm hitting the ball free and I play my best when I hit the ball free and it works out because the ball it goes where it needs to go Sabalenka just demolished Paula Bedosa okay we just saw Iga Swiatek struggle against Samsonova. I don't think Samsonova has that good of luck if she played Paula Bedosa in the semifinal round. Sabalenka's power with Iga's fatigue could be a very, very big problem. And the reality here is I think it will be a big problem. I don't see Iga being able to keep up the pace if this match goes deep into the first and second set, or even a third set. I see Iga breaking down. I possibly see some tears on her eyes. And the reality here is when Iga, early 2021, even some of 22, when you break Iga, Iga on this match win streak, she is she essentially, I mean, this year for the most part, after losing, um, after losing the first set, she essentially wins 90% of those matches. If she loses the first set against Sabalenka, she's not going to win this match because Sabalenka's power and pace is not going to allow her to get back in this game. Sabalenka, this court in this condition favors her game. She's a baseline player. The courts are playing very heavy. It's tough to get to these balls, especially with the pace and power. Sabalenka is putting on these balls. I think Sviantek is going to be fatigued and tired. My official prediction, I'm sorry guys, this is just so entertaining. Uh, the match starts here in four hours. My official prediction here is for Sabalenka to win at least one set. That is minus 139, and that is the best value that you can get. Take Sabalenka to win at least one set, and this has a potential upset alert. That's the prediction, guys. Sabalenka to win at least one set, minus 139. Thank you for listening. This is good energy. We will be covering... The next tournament as well get ready guys get your popcorn please like subscribe comment below if you've enjoyed the information uh, thank you guys uh, I will be following up probably if you guys like boxing uh, I want to talk a little bit of Tyson Fury is he the greatest modern heavyweight I, I would probably have to say he is but we're gonna talk about that in the next video this is good energy guys we are